Good evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Come in, come in. Tonight, we're inaugurating a quiz. It's a cutthroat session called Take It or Drop Dead. To qualify, just tear off the top of your neighborhood mortician and send it to us by hair mail. <laughs> now, listen to this. Here's our terror tune. If you could guess the correct title of our morbid mazurka, in one scream or less, here are the prizes you'll win. A brand new 1949 stainless steel guillotine. Just the thing for whittling down your wife's overhead. And a handsome hand-tooled Florentine dagger. The knife without a conscience. And the take-it-or-drop-dead grand prize. A free, all-expense, murder trial in a court of your own choosing. <laughs> Tonight's inner sanctum mystery, The Deadly Dummy, was written by Ed Adamson and Robert Sloan, and stars Mason Adams in the role of Steve with Elspeth Eric as Claire. Well, let's get to tonight's shivering shindig. Oh, by the way, let me warn you, all references to ghosts, living or dead, is anything but coincidental. Ready? All right. This is what happened to a guy named Steve Pearson. Why do you keep asking me the questions? Why don't you ask Marlowe? Ask him, Inspector. He'll tell you everything. I told you before, Pearson. Marlowe wasn't here. He is. He's in this room sitting right there in that chair. That's just a ventriloquist dummy in the chair. You told me yourself Marlowe is dead. You don't understand. That dummy is Marlowe. I can prove it to you. That dummy is alive, real. All right, all right. So he's alive. You think I'm crazy. Go ahead, Pearson. Let's hear the story. All of it. From the beginning. It began when I went to work as Marlowe's assistant. He was billed as the great Marlowe. The great Marlowe. His audience has always thought he was a wonder... But they didn't know him like I did. You couldn't please him no matter how hard you tried. There wasn't a meaner man alive than Fred Marlowe. I would have quit him right at the start if it hadn't been for Claire. I only stayed because of her. Claire, she was warm and wonderful. And she was Marlowe's wife. Ah, Steve. Claire, Claire, you gotta come away with me. Wouldn't do any good, Steve. He'd follow us wherever we went. You know him. He'd make our lives miserable. But we can't go on this way. How much of this can we stand? We don't have to go on this way. What do you mean? If you really love me... Claire, we couldn't do a thing like that. You hate him as much as I do. But doing a thing like that... It isn't hard when you really hate. When you really love... Somebody will find out. They always find out. Not the way I've planned it. Ground glass. You'll drink it. But how? He'll know. No, he'll never suspect. It'll be during his act. What? That part where he drinks the water while the dummy whistles. You handle his props. All you have to do is put the powdered glass into the water pitcher before he goes on. He'll pour the drink himself. Yes. After he goes off, you can wash out the pitcher and the glass. There'll be no evidence. You do it, Steve? When? He's giving his last performance to Lido on Tuesday. Tuesday. It'll be Marlowe's last performance anywhere. I'm on next. Everything set, Steve? Yes, Mr. Marlowe, everything is set. You made sure of the water in the picture. Last night you almost forgot about that. It's in there now. I made doubly sure this time. All right, Petey, let's go. You ready, Marlowe? Claire? Yes, Fred? My last performance here. Aren't you coming out to watch? I'll be along in a moment. I wouldn't want you to miss it. We're going to be really great tonight. Aren't we, Petey? <laughs> yeah, you said it, Marlowe. Tonight, we're going to knock them dead. Claire and I stood in the wings while Marlowe went through his act. It seemed like ages. Like he'd never get to the part we waited for. And then finally... He ain't talking about drinking. 
I'm a little thirsty myself. That was the cue. Now he was coming to it. Sure you won't join me? Oh, I never touched the stuff. <laughs> you go right ahead, Marlowe. I'll entertain the folks with a number while you dampen your tonsils. Okay, P.T. Take over. The water in the glass slowly emptied. A silent scream shook in my throat. Suddenly, I didn't want it to die. Hating him, there wasn't enough reason for killing him. I wanted to stop him. The scream in my throat begged for release. And then I felt Claire's hand grip mine. I turned to her. Her smile smothered the cry within me. Her hand tightened and pulled, and we walked away from the stage. Pearson! The doctor. I sent your wife for one, Marlowe. The pain, it... It feels like there's a fire inside of me. It won't bother you for long. Fire burning, cutting into me. Pearson, I'm dying. Yes, Marlowe, you're dying. Pearson, help me. Nothing can help you now. I won't die. The doctor will save me. He won't let me. There won't be any doctor. What? Claire didn't go for one. Claire, she wants me to die. She hates me. You and Claire, you both hate me. You did this to me. When you drank that water back at the Lido tonight, there was ground glass in it. No. Ground glass, so finely powdered you couldn't see or feel it. PG. A dummy can't help you, Marlowe. PG, PG, I'm dying. Help me. <laughs> what? Oh, Marlowe, you're just a ham at heart. What? A real ham. It, don't you think so, Steve? <sighs> what is this? Oh, that deathbed scene of Marlowe's. Right off the cob. I thought it was quite good, Petey. Uh, strictly amateur night. Strictly. Marlowe. Marlowe, you... You're all right. You see, Petey? I had Pearson believing. But it can't be. You drank that water. I saw you. Yes, I drank that water. But you're all right. It, 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 it's not possible. Marlowe, you're killing our friend Steve with suspense. <laughs> Come on, give him a break. Of course. Here you are, Pearson. Here's your ground glass. Marlowe had known we were up to something. Somehow he had switched the container of ground glass I had bought. He let me leave his hotel room without another word. I didn't know what to do, what to expect. I waited. Three days went by. Then he sent for me. Sit down, Pearson. I'll be with you in a minute. Marlowe was busy packing a trunk. I sat there waiting. The dummy, Petey, was propped up on the table, his perpetual grin mocking my fear. Our friend looks kind of uncomfortable, Marlowe. Really, Petey? Why did you send for me, Marlowe? Clara and I are sailing for South America tonight. I suppose you're curious as to what I'm going to do about you. All right. What are you going to do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I just wanted to tell you about Claire, Steve. She's poison. Petey never did like Claire. Marlowe's a sucker for that dame. <laughs> yeah, I guess she never told you that she tried to have Marlowe knocked off before. Yeah, there was another guy had the job before you. Claire fed him the same line. She's lying, Marlowe. Why don't you ask her? She'll be back soon. Claire wants Marlowe's money, but not Marlowe. <laughs> She was just using you. Shut up. She'd give you the go-by so fast. Shut up, I said. You're out of her class. She wouldn't want you in a million... Oh, this will shut you up. I'll break you into a million pieces. <laughs> <laughs> You're a fool, Pearson. You forget there are other Peaties. After all, they're only me. Remember? So you see, the only sure way to shut them up is to stop. Hmm? <laughs> Marlowe taunted me with a sickening laughter. I couldn't stand it. I had to stop him some way. I felt along the table behind me. My hand came across the heavy glass ashtray. I gripped it tightly, then brought it up from behind. He slumped to the floor. The grin was still on his face. I bent down over him. He was breathing. I hit him again. Marlowe was dead. You shouldn't have done that, Steve. It was the dummy talking. I heard him. He lay on the floor. I had crushed him into a hundred pieces. But they were his words, his voice. You can't get away with murder. You'll see, Steve. <laughs> Claire 
there, I tell you, that dummy did talk. Steve, it couldn't be. But I heard him. He talked to me, Claire. He talked Steve, to me. Steve, get hold of yourself. It was just in your mind, that's all. You shouldn't have done it. If you'd only waited, we would have found a safe way. Someone's at the door. We can't open it. You've got to. His body on the floor now, sir. Here, help me. What are you going to do? Put him in the trunk. Constant, hurry. Close the top and lock it. You stay here, I'll go to the door. Marlowe's room? Yes. I come for the trunk, lady. Oh, there must be some mistake. Well, that's a trunk, ain't it? That's what it come for. Mrs. Marlowe said you're mistaken. Look, mister, I got an order here. See? One trunk, number 3468. That's the number on the tag of this here trunk. Now, listen. The order says this trunk goes to stateroom 3D on the Tregania. That's what it says. Begin your sales tonight. Now, do I take this here trunk or don't I? Yes, yes. I, I'm sorry. That was our mistake. But, Claire... Please, take the trunk. Okay, lady. Hey. What do you got in this here trunk anyway? A dead body? What? What do you mean by that? Forget it, miss. It's just a keg. How about one of you two holding the door? Yes, I'll do it for you. Thanks, miss. Claire, what's wrong with you? Why did you let him take it? Don't you see, Steve? See what? There's a way out for us. His body won't be found here and we're safe. Now he's gone forever. Nobody will ever know. No one? What about me? Claire. Tell her about me, Steve. It's him. Now you can believe me. Steve, what's wrong? A dummy, you heard him. Just your nerves, no, darling. No, he spoke. That's right, Steve. You tell her. There he is again. Steve, where are you going? We've got to find that dummy. He's someplace in this room. Hello, Steve. Looking for me? <laughs> the dummy was propped up against the closet wall. He looked at me with the same evil grin as the one I had crushed to pieces. Steve, please stop staring that way. I'll burn him, every rotten fiber of him. I'll burn him to an ash. Then he'll never talk again. Steve, believe me, he didn't talk. It's just your imagination. I'm not crazy. I heard him. So did you, only you're too afraid to admit it. He couldn't talk without Marlo. Marlo would have to be alive for that dummy to speak. What? What'd you say? Marlo would have to be alive. You know that. Yes, yes, that's right. What's the matter with me? Yes, he would have to be alive. You see, it was just your imagination. Then Marlo isn't dead. Oh, now, Steve, please. He wasn't dead when you put him into the trunk. He just wanted us to think Steve. he was. I didn't kill him. He wasn't dead. That's why the dummy talked. Marlo can do tricks like that. Come on, Claire. We've got to hurry. No, wait, We've wait. got to get there fast. Claire, Steve, what are you talking about? Marlo's stateroom on the boat. He'll be there in the trunk. I've got to make sure he's dead. <laughs> on this deck, Claire. 3D, there it is. There's the trunk in the corner over there. Give me the key. Oh, Steve, we shouldn't have come here. I said give me the key. Don't, Steve, please don't open it. He is dead in there. I know. Give it to me. I grabbed a purse and took out the key. I unlocked the trunk. Then I pulled up the lid. Marlowe was in there, motionless. When I touched him, he was cold. Marlowe was dead, all right. But there was something else in the trunk with him at his feet, and the same grin was on his wooden face. Hello, Steve. I knew you'd come. I was waiting for you. Claire! Claire! Claire? Here, Steve, drink this. Oh, I don't know what happened to me. Everything went black. You fainted. You were right. Marlowe is dead. But that dummy, I heard him speak. No, Steve, it's just as I told you. You only heard it in your mind. He didn't really talk. Oh, Claire, Claire. Well, those Claire. things happened, and now it's over, and you'll never hear it again. Can you get out? Yeah, I'm all right now. We've got to get off this boat before somebody sees us. I ruined everything. No, we're still safe. Nobody knows we came here. You go first. That'll be the best way. I'll follow in a moment. Yes, I'll meet you on the pier. All right. How do you do, ma'am? Oh. oh! Sorry to give you such a joke. My name is Higgins, ma'am. I'm your steward. Just stop by so we'd know each other. Uh. Time was against us. We were too late in getting out of that stateroom. That steward would remember Claire. Steve, what are we going to do? There was only one chance. With Marlowe's body in that trunk, there was only one thing we could do. I had Claire ring for the steward. Yes, ma'am? Uh, 
Mr. Marlowe and I have decided to cancel our trip. But, Would you uh, please have the porters come for our trunk and take it to the pier? Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Marlowe, but that won't be possible. What? what? Well, in the excitement, ma'am, you probably didn't notice. Notice? What are you talking about? Our departure. We sailed 20 minutes ago. We had walked into a trap of our own making. A trap that was snapped closed on us by a dead man. Marlowe was a cold corpse in that trunk, but we were held by his invisible grip. Steve, there's still a chance we can get out of this. You mean if his body isn't found in that trunk? We'll arrange it so his body will never be found. We'll do it tonight when the deck outside is dark and deserted. You'll see, Steve. We'll be really rid of Marlowe this time. You'll see. got our first break. Early in the evening, a storm came up and grew worse with the passing hours. About 11 o'clock, I made a careful check of the promenade deck outside the stable. It was completely deserted. We supported Marlowe's body between us and carried it toward the darkened space at the end of the deck. In the morning, I'll report that my husband is missing. I'll ask a lot of questions. I'll have all the answers, just the way we planned them. I'll tell him how he often gets up at night to go for a walk. And the dizzy spells. Yes. Another of his dizzy spells. That's how it must have happened. Another terrible dizzy spell and he fell overboard. Meantime, Steve, you'll have to hide. I found a place in one of the lifeboats. We'll meet every night. Wait, I... wait. What is it? I thought I saw somebody down that way. I don't see anyone. It was probably just a shadow. Come on, let's get this over with. You can help me lift him to the rail. All right. Now push. It's gone, Steve. Yes, Claire. That's the end of Marlowe. Now we can live, really live. Will you kiss me, Steve? Will I kiss you? Come here. Oh, Steve. Oh. I beg your pardon. Oh. I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm looking for someone. I thought he might be with you. There was no one with us. No, we're alone. I see. I thought I saw three people walk over here. No. It's so dark, I must have been mistaken. Yes, it is dark. The man I'm looking for is uh, Mr. Marlowe. What? Do you happen to know him? Uh, My name is Marlowe. Uh, then you're the gentleman I'm looking for. My name is Ralph Kramer, Mr. Marlowe. Kramer. Are you all right, Mr. Marlowe? Uh, yes, yes, I'm fine. Why? I just wanted to be sure. By the way, I received your letter. Letter? Don't you remember? Uh, uh, no, not exactly. Oh, I can understand. You're a busy man, Mr. Marlowe. Well, just to refresh your memory, I'm in charge of entertainment here on the boat. I found out last week that you had booked passage. So I wrote to you asking you to consent to be one of the features in our theatrical tomorrow night. And I replied... You were very kind, Mr. Marlowe. You said yes. I just stopped by thank you and say that we're all looking forward to your performance tomorrow evening. Steve, you've got to keep trying. There isn't much time left. It won't work, Claire. It will, it will. You know Marlowe's act. You've understudied him. You went on for him in Cleveland, remember? I know, but I can't do it now. I can't get It'll it. It'll come to you, darling. Now just keep trying. Go on, Steve, please. Try again. All right. Tell me, Petey, don't you and your girlfriend, Phoebe, ever have a difference of opinion? Sure, Marlowe. But I wouldn't dare tell her about it. Oh, you see, Claire, it's no good. Well, you're doing fine. Don't tell me. I know it's rotten. Tell him I'm not going on. Steve, it means our lives. You've got to go through with it. Sure. You can do it, Steve. I'll see you through. Claire. What's wrong? What is it? The dummy just talked, and I didn't do it. He said, you can do it, Steve. I'll see you through. You heard him, didn't you? No. Don't let her kid you, Steve. There, he said something again. You didn't hear that either. Oh, now, Steve, don't. You've got to pull yourself together. That dame can really play angles, can't she, friend? Yes, she really can. Well, who are you talking to? You know who I'm talking to. You know all about it. Go ahead, Steve. You tell her. You're it. making that dummy talk, Claire. It was you all the time. You don't know what you're saying. You're trying to drive me crazy. That's why you're doing it. Now I know what Marlowe said about you was true. You were just using it. No, Steve. You I... wanted Marlowe dead. You wanted his money. Just as he said you were playing me for a sucker. Steve, don't look at me that way. Now I can see you for the first time. What you're really... Don't you come near me. You are the same evil grin as that dummy. 
Because that's what you are, something inhuman. No, stay away. Something mean and vicious and bad. Steve. Ah. Steve. Oh. My hands grip the throat. I squeeze tighter and tighter. My nails digging deep into the soft flesh. The color slowly drained out of her face. There was a final gasp, and then she stopped moving. She was like a rag doll in my hand. I stood there holding her lifeless body. Then after a while, I heard a knock on the door. Miss Marlowe. Miss Marlowe, it's Ralph Kramer. Mr. Kramer? What? What is it? The show started. You're out in five minutes. All right, Kramer. I'll be there. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take extreme pleasure in presenting the great Marlowe. sat there with a dummy on my knee and looked out on him into the sea of faces. All the men had the same face. It was Marlowe's. The women were Claire. I tried not to look at them. Come on, Steve. The dummy whispered to me. Come on. I told you I'd see you through. Let's go. <clears throat> Petey, I want you to meet the folks. Hiya, folks. Uh, uh, by the way, Steve. You fool, it's Marlo. Marlo. Uh, who was that lady I saw you with last night? Uh, uh, last night? Uh, that was no lady. That was. Now, uh... you're not going to tell me it was your wife. Because <laughs> I know whose wife she was. Stop it. Sort of a deadhead, isn't she, Steve? I told you not to call me Steve. You'll give it away. I warned you about that dame, remember? <laughs> I told you she was playing you for a sucker. Stop talking about her. We've got to get back on the routine. Ah, uh, the routine. Yeah, that's what she gave you. I said, cut it out. Cut it out. Hey, with ground glass. If you don't huh? stop, so help me, I'll choke you. Uh, how do you like this guy, folks? He wants to choke me and cut his best part off. I'm warning you. Just one more wrong word. Please, it's will kill you, folks. Uh, wait till you hear the story I'm going to tell you. Oh. And it's no joke. Oh. Uh, you think this is Marlowe here, huh? Don't listen to him. He's lying. You can't stop me now. No. It's too late, Steve. Don't listen to him, please. He doesn't know what he's saying. He, he's going to tell you lies. He's going to tell you I'm a murderer, but don't believe him. Make him stop laughing. Get him out of here. Somebody make him stop, please. That's it, Inspector. That's the whole story of what happened. It was all because of the dummy on that chair there. You give us a lawyer's name and we'll call it. I don't think a lawyer would do me much good now. That's up to you, Pearson. I'll think it over. Okay, Roberts, take him downstairs. I don't suppose you'll need me any longer, Inspector? Uh, just one question, Kramer. Uh, what's that? Why did you hear the dummy say that night when Pearson tried to go through with Marlowe's act? Oh, the dummy didn't say a word. Pearson was up there on the stage uh, talking to himself. Well, that closes tonight's cadaverous chapter. Poor Steve Pearson, he just couldn't help double-talking himself into a knot, the kind the hangman ties. Now he's in a grave condition. But it's his own fault, you know. His dummy done told him. You know, the real reason he killed Claire is because he figured two dead heads are better than one. Well, anyway, all's well that ends dreary. Yes, as we say here in the inner sanctum, the end always justifies the scream. <laughs> inner sanctum is heard each week in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System and has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.